Durst the worst. Oh, Durst the worst. Durst is the worst. Durst 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 the worst. Good evening. member of the Milwaukee County Board. Speaking of the SOP, I happen to read it. It says, it shall be the policy of the Milwaukee Police Department to implement an immigration enforcement strategy that is consistent with the mission of reducing the levels of crime, fear, and violence in the city of Milwaukee with a policing philosophy that is community-based where individuals are encouraged to report crime and provide the police with useful information and intelligence. Now, it stands to reason that if MPD is working with ICE, they are going to in engender distrust, disrespect, and non-cooperation with the Latino community. What? By not working with ICE, MPD will bring trust respect and cooperation from the Latino community. It's basic common sense. Uh, you don't have to be a police man or woman to figure that much out. So uh, I call upon this police commission to have a common sense strategy and don't do ICE's dirty work in the streets of Milwaukee. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Kenneth P. Green. When local, foreign, when local law enforcement works with ICE, the result is to further sow distrust between local police and the people in the community. For example, non citizens and citizens who are survivors of crimes or witnesses to crimes believe they cannot go to the police for fear that the police will turn them in or someone else who knows over to ICE. We have to note that federal courts have upheld that cutting funding based on non-compliance to immigration enforcement is unconstitutional. We need SOP 130 amendment, so we urge the Milwaukee Police Department, MPD, to use standard operating procedure that clearly bars collaboration with ICE, doing so decrease racial profiling, improve public safety, keep families together, and take away fear created in the communities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, I am the daughter of refugees from genocide in the Ukraine. In 1921, when the US first established ethnic quotas against people who they thought would never assimilate and who thought were undesirable racially. So, from my own experience, I have to say, I know what it feels like to be unwelcome in this country for no rational reason whatsoever. I am an RN. I worked for 42 years as a nurse. I was at Sinai for 17 years, and I worked for Milwaukee Public Schools for the last 10 years of my career before I retired. I call on the MPD and the, and the Milwaukee Fire Department to not traumatize the children, the students of Milwaukee. Do not cooperate with ICE and create a fire of fear where children must not, children must not go to school worried that their parents aren't gonna be there when they come home. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Milwaukee children must see their must not see their parents racially profiled, and they must not live in fear. That's why people came here in the first place, is to live free from fear. Protect loving families. Don't break them apart. Never again is now. Thank you. Yes, my name is Tony Bias, and I'm a member of the Milwaukee Public School Board. I am not here today uh, to speak on behalf of the Milwaukee Public School Board, uh, but I would like to leave with commission members a statement that was uh, released by the Milwaukee Public School Board regarding the issue of immigration and safe having schools. 
and making sure that we encourage everybody in the Milwaukee Public Schools and in this city uh, to comply with the idea that we cannot continue to collaborate with any agency or organization that is sort of like planting fear on people. What happened in El Paso, what happened in Mississippi, what happened in Milwaukee is unacceptable if we want to create a democracy that is a safe place for everybody to be striving at. Okay? What we believe is in the Milwaukee Public Schools that every school has to be a place that is free of the possibility of ICE ever coming to these schools to intimidate anybody that is a member of that community. But in the same way, I want to support the language that is being proposed by members, uh, by, by Jose de la Frontera and other people in the community that would enhance uh, the policies of the Milwaukee uh, Police Department as it relates to the issue of how to operate uh, in relationship with ICE. I feel that we have come a long way in this community, that we have a police department, we have a city that has worked very well with the community in these matters. But there has to be a refinement of the language and policy. And I happen to be in an institution that deals with policy all the time. So I sort of like know a little bit of policy. Uh, but if we, if, if we sort of like codify what we're talking about, then we avoid significantly the hurting that happens when people that are part of an organization go off on their own and do certain kinds of things that are not acceptable in our community. They should not be acceptable for anybody in our community. Uh, so I want to leave with you the statement that we produced in the Milwaukee Public Schools because it's a statement that clearly articulates the concerns that we have. The concerns that we have to ensure that we have a safe community for everybody. Okay? The kind of language that we're talking about here is language that will accelerate that process, make it possible for everybody. But we need to send a strong message to the country that in Milwaukee, we will not collaborate with agencies of government that follow what happens regarding policy in an administration that has proven not to be very supportive of an understanding of people coming to the United States for whatever reason. We are also very concerned that this administration has promoted notions, has promoted ideas that sort of like give permission to people to be cruel, to be cruel to people, to be cruel to children, to, to, to engage in activities that are not only unlawful, but that suggest that we are a different kind of country, the kind of country we don't want to be. We want to be a democracy that is grounded on people doing good and being kind to people. And in order to do that, we need to have language that is codified, we need to have policies, ideas, we need to write things up that will make possible that democracy. So please state this statement and read it into the record and thank you so much and support the language of Jose de la by reading a quote from a law enforcement officer at Monterey that year. Um, shortly after the arrest of Jose de la Cruz, he said, by placing the responsibility for the arrest of Mr. de la Cruz on the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, ICE has engaged in an egregious attempt to misrepresent the facts. This marks yet another attempt on ICE's part to point a finger at local law enforcement for not performing ICE's own duties and to take, away, take attention away from ICE's horrific act of terrorizing a family thereby having a chilling effect on the community. These words spoken by Sheriff Lucas demonstrate what I would hope for from the leaders in this room. As many of you know, Sheriff Lucas does not honor ICE detainer requests in county jails unless there is a judicial warrant. All we are asking as Rosa de Frontera is for a similar policy in our city, one that would not honor collaboration between our police and ICE unless there is a judicial warrant. And I know at the last hearing here on October 3rd, we heard the chief say, policy does not reduce crime, something that was repeated in Milwaukee Police Department's uh, press release. 
But I ask you all, as members of this commission, whose job it is to create policy with that exact intention, to listen to the community today and to adopt Osala uh, Fronteras recommended changes to SOP 130. And uh, unfortunately, today I don't have all the time to respond to all the mischaracterizations in that press release, but I will say two things. Jose de la Cruz was not a felon. He had a date, a minor record, and there have not been extensive efforts by the Milwaukee Police Department to work with Jose de la Frontera. And we have the we have emails to corroborate that. Originally, there was supposed to be a working group established between Jose de la Frontera, uh, members of this commission, and the Milwaukee Police Department, but that fell through over the summer. That is why we need the Fire and Police Commission. That's why we need a strong Fire and Police Commission. One whose loyalty is to the community that's supposed to serve. So what I would hope for from commissioners today would be to understand that at a time when immigrant families are being attacked at the highest levels of government by the Trump administration, we need strong policies here in Milwaukee that reduce racial profiling and value immigrants. Thank you for your time. Hi, bitch!